One of the reasons we've gone to mostly using glyphosate is we've tried some other products and the soil activity is, is a critical factor. With this cut stump treatment, it seems though if the chemical has some soil activity, such as imazapir or, well, the habitat or arsenal, which is, is a imazapir, or some other a chemical, then we may have some unexpected or unintended consequences. There's a spot right here behind me. We treated this stump with, with habitat. Uh, we like the, the aquatic label on it and everything, but this is actually kind of a leach zone from a canal down. And so we've got the, the leaching and you can see down where the, the habitat has killed the vegetation down below the treatment from the, the motion of the water through the soil. So uh, glyphosate loses all activity when it comes in contact with the soil. So that's why we've, we've, uh, we've kind of stuck with glyphosate. We're trying other products as well, but we're really pleased with glyphosate in that it does not have the soil activity and kill uh, unintended targets. Here's another good example of what happens when you've got some soil activity. You can see that streak of dead zone right down below the stump. You also notice that we've cut these fairly high. You could grab this with a piece of equipment and yank it out. These were treated in 2010, so it's been three years since these were treated. They're, uh, they're dead, so you, know, you could come back with some equipment now, yank it out, and you would not get any sucker growth off from it. So you can cut them up that high and get good kill, about 12 to 14 inches. Um, you don't have to cut them off right down to the ground. This is an example of a Russian olive tree that was cut and not treated with an herbicide. And the growth here represents probably one or two seasons growth of suckers and sprouts from the base of the tree. Now this particular tree, once it had re-sprouted, we came in and treated with a different treatment method which was basal bark herbicide application where you take uh, uh, an herbicide like Garlon 4 Ultra and uh, a crop oil and mix that and spray just the bottom 12 to 18 inches of the tree. And you can see that it's very effective on small trees with thin bark. But you can expect this kind of regrowth if you simply cut a Russian olive and don't treat it with something. So here's an example. This stump right here was treated in January of 2010, so it's been three and a half years. It's totally dead, as opposed to partially dead. No, it's totally dead. And here we have one behind us. This was a control. It was cut down the same day, but no chemical, no herbicide treatment. So uh, that's just kind of show you the difference of what happens between treatment and no treatment. In summary, the cut stump method is an extremely effective way to control Russian olives. One of the very nice things about it is it doesn't matter what time of the year you do it, it's equally effective during the growing season or during the dormant season. Some of the keys, I think, are uh, getting a nice clean final cut so that you have a, a relatively level surface on all of the cut uh, stems that you're working with, applying the herbicide within a few minutes after you've cut and making sure that you get complete coverage of the cambium area just under the bark uh, around the surface of each stem. And if you do that, uh, our experience has been that you can expect nearly 100% control. If you try to do uh, short, take shortcuts, uh, cut the trees and uh, not treat them or cut the trees and not treat within a reasonable amount of time, you may not have the results you want. But if you've got some Russian olives that you'd like to get rid of, give the cut stump method uh, a consideration because it's been very effective in our test plots.